What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight with the beginning of our Vortec L31 budget build, as cheap as possible, making as much power as we can. Let's check. Cylinder one, ten percent. Uh, cylinder three, eight percent. Uh, cylinder five, eight percent. Uh, cylinder six, five percent. Two, we had five uh, percent. Uh, four, ten percent. Number um, six over here. Uh, it's got a bit of a leaky exhaust valve. Actually, these two have both um, four and six have a bit of a leaky exhaust valve. Uh, but six being worse, it's got about 18% leak down, and I think most of that's coming out the exhaust. Uh, so obviously, this is why we do this. It's a good, a good idea of gives us a good idea of what's going on. Uh, and then number eight is only nine or ten percent. So overall, pretty good. I do believe this was a runner, even with that little bit of a leaking exhaust valve. So things are looking good. I'm going to go ahead and rip the heads off and see what the see what the cylinders look like. So you can see, you get the normal crustiness. Typical, especially when you see a little bit of intake gasket failure, which we did on this. But look at the cylinder bores. Like, this is the thing with these late model blocks, especially the Vortec blocks. Like, there's not even any ring ridge, and that's really common on these. Even with high mileage, you'll pull them apart, and you can just slide the pistons right out, no problem. You can still see cross hatching in the cylinders. Things are actually looking really good here. got a brand new timing set in it by the looks of it. It's kind of uh, kind of unusual. But the most Vortex, you know, they always have the original timing set in them. So I wonder what's going on here. That's weird. All right. So whenever I'm tearing down an engine, even if I plan on doing a rebuild, I like to take a look at the bearings and the spark plugs. The spark plugs will tell you a story of how this engine was running. Uh, the bearings will tell you the story of the condition of the engine. This is the same thing why I do the leak down test. Even though I'm tearing this engine down and putting new rings and everything in it, I kind of like to just suspect or, or see if there's any suspected problems going on with this engine so I can you know, make sure that they're corrected and take a look at what's going on there. Uh, the, the spark plugs look pretty good, so it, you know, it tells me it's a runner. A few of them look a little better than others, maybe a few little signs of oil burning, but overall, pretty good. You're just looking for extreme you know, oil burning or weird issues. Yeah, even though, like I said, you are rebuilding this thing, it's just good to see and, and, and have a good indication of what this engine was like prior, especially with these budget builds when we're not doing a full, full rebuild. Um, the crank, the crank bearings look fairly good, uh, really good considering this thing had uh, 120 miles or so on it, uh, close to 200,000 kilometers. Everything is looking really good, pretty normal for these Vortex. Uh, the rod bearings show some indication of issues. Uh, this one has a slight scoring in it, as you can probably hopefully pick up on the video. And then uh, pretty normal, and this is one of the things we're going to have to address, is uh, the out-of-bore 
uh, or sorry, out of round uh, rod bore. So the, the rod bearings are showing some indication that we have some, um, some rod bores that are out of round. And what I mean by that is this is this this bore right here that rides on the crankshaft with your big this is called your big end uh, connecting rod bore. And what happens over time, this bore can become out around, and obviously we that's not something we we want uh, for our, our bearing clearances. So this is going to be one of the most important parts when we're doing a budget rebuild, and this is going to be something that you're not going to be able to do at home, is we're going to actually get these resized. Since we're getting resized, we're going to spend the extra hundred dollars or so and put a set of ARP rod bolts in here. The rod bolts are the most stressed fastener in the engine. So having a good set of rod bolts and getting these resized will just just allow us to, to have a little bit more confidence in this engine. Uh, it, it is an expense, but it is an expense I think is very important that we, we spend on our, on our engine. Even though this is a budget build, we don't want this engine blowing up in a short amount of time and then it's all for nothing. So all this work we're putting into it, this is an important thing. So we're going to actually put some ARP rod bolts and I'll go over that a little bit more in another video and with the part numbers and we're going to have these rod bores resized. This is not Things are looking really good for our L31 build right here. Uh, it's a two bolt main as you might have caught in the video, but that's okay. For our power level that we're going to be putting, two bolt mains work just fine. Trust me, I pushed two bolt mains with superchargers have never had an issue. Um, so I'm not worried about that. I suspected it was going to be a two bolt main because it is out of a 1500 pickup. But everything is looking really good. The cylinder boards are fantastic. I, I dingle ball home this side and uh, so far we look like we have less than a thousandth of an inch bore wear and taper on these cylinders which is fantastic. Uh, so basically the plan with this is is to spend the least amount of money but end up with a good engine. Sure we could you know slap an engine together and hope for the best but that's not what we're trying to achieve here because if we we build an engine and it blows apart in a couple dyno runs or when you put it in your car this is all for nothing all this hard work is for nothing so what the point of this build is for the guys that are willing to get their hands dirty do the work themselves but also spend money where money is needed without going overboard so this is about as budget as you want to go with having a reliable engine. In my opinion, the L31 is the best 350 platform you can start with. Uh, you get the windage tray, factory windage tray, you get the blocks that don't wear a lot. You, the big benefit is the factory OE roller cam with a really good lifter setup on here with the hydraulic lifters. Um, you get the obviously the Vortex cylinder heads. Uh, as long as our, our cylinder heads aren't cracked and things are from a quick check, things are looking really good. So we might have really scored on this set, uh, this this uh, particular engine. For what we paid and what we're getting, you can't really get a better bang for your buck. So we're off to a really good start. Um, I, what, I, what I need from you guys is what things are you wanting to see and what things are you wanting to, to for us to do. Obviously we are putting a carbureted intake manifold and I will be making a video on that. The best deal that's out there right now on a, a carbureted um, Vortec intake manifold that we're going to be using on here. Um, but let me know what you guys want to see, what, what, you know, what aspects to this. Uh, and I, I'm going to try to, I have sort of a plan, but I want to know, I want to make sure that I'm on board with what you guys want because uh, really this is just a really high, highly requested engine build from you guys. So I love the budget build stuff. I really do. Um, it's one of those things, as long as you're willing to get your hands dirty, you can save yourself a ton of money with the cleanup and work yourself. Uh, and it's a great learning experience for a lot of you guys that are building your first engines and don't have a huge budget. So, um, you know, I think we're going to end up with a really good engine. So uh, if you're new here, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll, you know, continue the journey on our L31 Vortec 350. Thanks, guys.